is an escapee rehabilitation center in West Germany. There is a new arrival at the center. He is Joseph Wunorski, an orphan. Like a hunted animal, Joseph distrusted all humankind. To him, gentleness was a snare, a room, a trap, or at best, a place of temporary refuge. It was never a home. Because in all his 15 years, Joseph Wunorski could not remember when he had a home. What happened to young Joseph when he found himself in the United States is the subject of tonight's story on Crusader, starring Brian Keith. a few months after his arrival. Through therapy and kindness, great improvement was made. He had become accustomed to unshaded rooms and open doors. But deep in his young mind, there remained many doors still unopened. My name is Matt Anders. I'm a freelance magazine writer. I like kids. I like to see them the way they ought to be. I've covered all kinds of stories about refugee children. But Josef Wynorski's story had become a very personal one with me. Hey, Josef. Hello, Mr. Anders. Well, I got a letter for you. A letter? For me? Yep, all yours. I've never had a letter before. Well, there's always got to be a first time, I guess. From the United States? Yep. Karl Pazarov. Who is that? Oh, he's an old friend of mine. We used to live in the same neighborhood when we were kids. He's still there, River Street. He wants me to come there and, and live with him. Yeah. See, I told Carl about you, and I figured uh, you two might want to get to know each other. I was just getting used to it here. You'd like it there, Josef. Remember what I told you about America? I remember. Yes. And the books you read about it? Books. And books, everything is always wonderful. Well, it is wonderful. You'll find out. Carl Pissarro's certificate of assurance was approved by the International Social Service and Joseph was booked for passage to the States. The following summer, I came back to the States to do some follow-up yarns on what had happened to refugees after they finally resettled. Like a homing pigeon, I headed for River Street. Carl Passaro had kept in touch with me, reporting on Joseph's progress. I've been a writer, a word merchant, all my working life. But the Chinese sure pegged it. One picture is worth a thousand words. Matt! You're looking great. He didn't know you were coming. Well, you don't know when you're going to get lucky, Joseph. Joe. Yeah, Joe. Joe. Real American, huh? Real American. How's Carl? Pop? He's fine. He'll be home from work soon. Let's go upstairs and wait for him. Uh, how about your game? Uh... We got an important guest, Stevie. See you tomorrow. You were right, Matt. It is wonderful here. Sure. That's what I'd hope you'd say, Joe. Come on. Hey, you better check that number 21, Frank. Sounds like she's heading for trouble. So are you, Vic. Don't quit shooting off your mouth. <laughs> you take care of the dispatching. I'll worry about my mouth, huh? I heard all about that big speech you gave to the guys down on Pier 7 during lunch hour. You're going to talk yourself right into a bad spot someday. You can't fight the whole world. This one is Harry Martin, the whole world. Around these docks, he is. That's because everybody backs down, lets him tramp on him. Carl, we've been friends for a long time. I don't want to see anything happen to you. 
and I don't want any trouble. Oh, Frank, relax, will you? You relax, fella. Look, we, we gotta make a living. I've got Evelyn, you got Joe, so just... Just take it easy, will you? I'm not gonna take anything easy. Not until I get some of you guys to stand up to Martin and his hoods. But you can't. When you get some starch in your spine, I'll stop shooting my mouth off. <laughs> that was quite a speech, Carl. Don't you think that was quite a speech, Frank? Isn't it about your quitting time, Frank? Listen, Dougie. He was just blowing off steam. He didn't mean anything. Dinner time. The wife is going to be waiting for you. Carl. Look, how long we know each other, huh? Since I'm that high. <laughs> you know something? I always thought you were a real smart guy. Head and shoulders above everyone else. But you're not being smart at all now, Carl. That was good advice Frank was giving you. Let me say it another way, huh? If you can't beat them, you join them. Can you understand that, Carl? You will never understand, Doug. <laughs> All his life, your father fought people like Harry Martin. Yeah. When he died, there wasn't enough money left for a decent funeral. But there's more important things than that. Does that do anything to you inside when you make a man like, like Frank Gervasi crawl? Now look, I didn't come down here to talk about me. I came down to tell you to get in a step. A speech you made on Pier 7 today. Let that be your last one. Martin ain't gonna take any more from you. Oh, wait a minute, I'm not through. Now listen to me. You tell Harry Martin for me. I'd sooner be dead than join him. Yeah. I'll tell him. I'll tell him, Carl. I'll get some more coffee. Hey, Joe. See if that ice cream guy's down on the street, huh? Yes, sir. Joseph. Be careful, huh? Something bothering you? No. <laughs> oh, we're doing fine. Well, what's the, uh... Be careful, you got trouble? Not a thing, boy, not a thing. Come on, come on, what is it, Carl? Ah, a little something down the docks. Doesn't amount to anything. Well, what does it amount to? Kind of a mess. Kind of a big, rotten mess. You remember Harry Martin from the old days? Yeah. Well, he's back. He's taken over again. Forcing everybody into line. Nearly everybody. Not you, huh? <laughs> well, you know me, Matt. I got a big mouth. Can't keep it shut. I gotta talk it up. I remember Martin played pretty rough in the old days. Yeah, he still does. Turn your stomach to see what he's done. Got everybody scared of their own shadows. <laughs> Kid never gets up and down the stairs that fast. I guess you're extra special company, huh? Sure. Joe? Joe?
tough. Yeah, tough, Lieutenant. I understand Carl Passero was a real nice guy. Yeah, he was. Too bad it has to happen to nice guys. Well, it doesn't have to happen. We'll get the guy who did it. I told you Martin was behind it. Maybe. First, we have to get the hood who was in front of it. Look, he had to come out the front door. Somebody saw him. There were a dozen people on the street. That doesn't mean that they'll talk. I dropped Joe off at the rectory of Dr. Muller, the local minister. Next day, I stopped in to see how he was doing. It's hardly said a word, Matt. It's been a severe blow. Well, more than you realize, Doctor. I'll do all that I can. We must get him permanently settled. He needs a feeling of belonging. He needs more than that, Dr. Muller. What we've got to do somehow is to show him that this thing that happened was... is an exception here, that this isn't the way things are in our country. The same all over. Just like over there. I don't believe that, Joey. Everybody's afraid to talk. Not everybody, son. Even Stevie's scared to talk to me. Down in that street, everybody's afraid to talk. All the doors are closed, locked. Now, Joe, Joe. It's the same. It's the same all over. People afraid, hiding. Even Stevie's afraid. But Poppy... He wasn't afraid. Wasn't afraid. I know that, Joey. I know he wasn't afraid. He's a brave guy. That's the way you got to be. A lot of people like your pop in this world. In this country. I'll prove it to you, Joey. I'll prove it to you. said everybody was afraid. The air was still with fear. You could see it in their eyes, the way they turned their backs or walked away shunning him. Harry Martin's handiwork. One good man dead and all the other good people shot through with fear. At the house, you could almost smell it. Joe had said the doors inside were locked even against him. I wasn't stopping until I'd opened one. didn't open for me either. I knew they were in there. I knew they heard the bell and the knocking. But I could feel them freeze in terror behind those locked doors. I made a last pitch at Frank Gervasi's. He lived on the first floor of the house where Carl had lived on the second. Frank? Come on, Frank, I know you're in there. Open up! Matt, I'm sorry. Frank didn't want I me. I told you to keep that door shut. But We're not talking to anybody. But Frank... You're going to talk to me, Frank. I got nothing to say. I already told that to the police. Frank, maybe you can help me. Look, 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 just you stay out of this, will you? Please stay out of this. But Frank, it's I not... said stay out of it! Frank. Look, look, Matt, you're wasting your time. Well, you're a Carl's best friend. He's dead, and I'm sorry. That's all? What do you want me to do? I didn't see the shooting. I was out of the house at the time. I already told that to the Lieutenant Hamlin. Well, don't tell me that. You know who did it. I don't know anything. Now, will you leave me alone? Leave you alone? Your best friend gets murdered, and you want to be left alone? Look, I'm no hero. No kidding. I got a wife to think about. Carl had a kid. Well, he should have thought about the kid. He didn't him. think about him. He thought about you and the rest of you down here. There are other ways of doing things. There's one way to get Martin. You stand up to him. So you do it. Me, I want to live. What for?
street off as a blind alley and headed uptown to Harry Martin's penthouse. This was one door I didn't have to force open, although it would have been a pleasure. Oh, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, Doug, perhaps Mr. Anders would like a drink. I'm choosy about who I drink with. <laughs> Milk, doctor's orders, stomach trouble. And Carl Passaro died of the same trouble. I beg your pardon? He had him killed. Well, that's a wild and irresponsible accusation, Mr. Anders. I'm a businessman. You're a gutter rat. You can't provoke me, Anders. You're wasting your time. And mine. Doug, show him out. I'm not true yet. Come on, come on. <laughs> That's right, Doug. Don't shoot this place up. It's too nice. Not like down on River Street, is it, Mark? No nice thick carpets down there to soak up blood. Right? Now that you've proved what a fine physical specimen you are, is there anything else? Yeah. You know the meaning of the word fear? I know it is a word in the dictionary. Well, you're gonna get to know it on a real personal basis. You're gonna get so you're like those people down on River Street, you feel it crawling around inside you. Only when I get through with you, you're not even gonna have a door to hide behind. You're gonna be out in the open all by yourself, alone and scared. Where are you going? There's gonna be trouble, more than Passero. Don't be ridiculous. Look, what if we get someone to talk? They wouldn't talk to the police, would they? Why should they talk to him? Besides, we've convinced everyone on River Street not to go looking for trouble. Now, pick those papers up off the floor and fix me a drink. What's he doing here? Said you were just going for a walk. You've been gone so long. What do you want, Matt? He brought Joe. He's in there asleep. Now, it was my idea as much what? as Matt's. He needs you, Frank. He needs both of you. Why pick on us? Well, you're people he knows. People who could love him, Frank. He likes you next to Carl. But now, at a time like this... Dr. Miller says now is the best time for Joe. Uh, Please, Frank, let us keep him. It's so wonderful having a boy in there again. Oh, stop it, will you? Don't you understand? Understand what? It's not fair to do this to Evelyn and me. It's something I want, Frank. With all my heart. Will you keep him? Should I throw him out into the street? What do you think I am? I think you're all right. More coffee? More coffee? Better hurry, you're going to be late for work. things over. I want to talk to you, Matt. So Frank Chavassi is in a talkative mood. This could be catching. Well, there's only one thing to do with infection. Stamp it out.
think what happened to Carl would have been a lesson for you. It was. It taught me finally you don't have to live in fear. Frank, you know how much longer you got to live? You can't go on forever settling things for Martin with that gun. It's about time you got back. Doug couldn't make it, Martin. What do you want? Well, Doug's busy doing a little talking. I think it's gonna make a lot of sense to the police, too. In fact, he's on his way downtown right now. Frank Chavassi went along just to keep his story straight, so uh, I'll give you odds your name's gonna come up quite a lot. face was an ugly reflection of their own past fears. Seeing it, they understood they need never have been afraid if they'd faced up to him as Carl had done right from the start. They weren't going to have to worry about Martin for a long time. But I was hoping they'd always remember. There might be other Martins. There are still places in the world where families huddle behind closed doors along streets of fear. Joseph Wynorski relived that old fear here, but only for a short while. For here, the crusade for personal liberty remains ever vigilant. To those who help people like Joseph, including organizations such as the Refugee Relief Program and the United States Escapee Program, a salute from Crusaders.